Hello, fish fans. Uh, this is Ron, Garage Aquatics 2023. Um, this is my 20-gallon farm tank. And I know some of you have seen it before. Uh, it's on this bottom rack of, of uh, that I've got here, this, this uh, Home Depot fish rack that I got. Um, and it's next to another 20-gallon tank that's got black water in it right now. And I'm prepping it. I want to raise uh, shrimp in here. I'll probably put Blue Dream shrimp in here. So in this farm tank, I started it with these, uh, I bought, bought a bunch of crips and I put them in these little 1.9 inch terracotta pots. And then uh, uh, a friend gave me uh, this group of fish. There's this uh, wild type molly right here. And some, uh, and there's uh, some more of them. And then there's some little, he called them mutt guppies. And they're great little fish, and I love these little wild-type mollies. These are just spectacular fish. Um, and with the, and also there's some uh, uh, red cherry shrimp in here. There's one. And then with the crypts came uh, my least favorite thing in the aquarium thing so far, the aquarium hobby, are, uh, let's see if I can find it. There's one right there. Um, let's see if I can point to it. The bladder snail more bladder snails so not a fan so what I've been doing is here yeah, the guppies go for them the mollies go for them what I've been doing is just sort of reaching in and crushing them and then the fish will eat them and the shells break down and the uh, provide calcium for the shrimp uh, but what I found I have found these snails in this adjacent tank uh, and I'm going to use this tank for uh, uh, I think I'm going to put some blue dream shrimp in here so I'm kind of prepping it I've got Indian almond leaf in here I've got a bunch of plants in here too uh, this uh, hydrocotyl Japan big water floating on the top and, and there's some planted and behind that that's a banana leaf right there a piece of banana leaf and there's also some java fern and then a crypt uh, spiralis uh, planted in the substrate in the back uh, and there is one, I put one uh, red cherry shrimp in here, kind of a sacrificial shrimp, to see that, see if it'll work. And he's hiding in here because he was still around yesterday. I haven't seen him today, but he's still there. So he seems to be happy. So I think that the tank is now shrimp ready. But I found snails in here. In fact, there's one right there, um, right inside the silicone. And... Uh, what I'm thinking is they're just crawling right over the top and in. So I used to teach horticulture for about 20 years. So I know some gardening tricks. And I also worked in the nursery industry for a while. Um, and uh, one of the things that I learned is you can use, uh, and it's done commercially in nurseries, uh, copper, copper uh, either copper foil tape or copper uh, flashing around beds, garden beds, to keep snails either in or out. Um, and when I, when I worked for this one nursery in Orange County, California, we'll call it the nursery that must not be named, uh, they used to ship to Oregon, and Oregon considers themselves a European brown snail-free state. So all the plants were inspected on the way into Oregon, and if anything was found with uh, uh, European brown garden snails, they would just turn it back around to, to the source. Uh, so when we would contract grow plants for uh, Oregon nurseries, we would uh, create a bed, wrap it in copper flashing all the way around, um, tight to the ground, and then every plant that was going to go in there would be inspected. They'd all come out of the pots, they'd look for snails, flip all the leaves on all, and this could be thousands of plants, 5,000 plants at a time, uh, and, and then look in the soil for, for uh, clusters of snail eggs. Uh, and then they would spray for snails just to make sure, you know, uh, snail treatments, and then they'd spray continually, you know, every so often uh, over the course of the growth of those plants and they would be uh, inspected at the end by a local ag inspector and they would be certified snail free, all right? 
so the copper works as a, as a snail repellent. So I'm hoping that's what's going to happen here. So I put this copper tape that I bought. It's it's a, a copper foil tape, and and it's paper backed. It's thin. It's a little hard to work with, and it was really tough getting it all the way back there two feet. Uh, if I had thought of this or known this or whatever sooner. Uh, that I was gonna have a bladder snail infestation, I would have put that on the tank before uh, uh, before I stuck it on the shelf here. Um, now you gotta be careful with this because it will also, uh, my understanding is copper in the water will kill shrimp. So this is up on the edge of the tank, so I'm not worried about it being submerged in the water. Uh, you want to make sure you never use any kind of fertilizers for your, your plants or anything with any copper on it. Uh, you know, like copper wire to suspend a plant or something like that. You want to be really careful about that because it will kill the shrimp as it slowly leaches into the water. Uh, but anyway, so we're going to see how this works and see if I can keep those uh, nasty little bladder snails trapped in this tank for now uh, and out of this tank. Uh, they're showing up around, so I gotta be really careful about any plants I move from tank to tank now. Uh, when these crypts are ready to go, I will inspect every one um, and make sure I do not find any snails or snail eggs. There's another snail on the rim of that pot right there, just right there. So they are everywhere in here. Um, I know some people like them, and I get it with the uh, the bigger snails, like the mystery snails or the rabbit snails and things like that, um, more more decorative. Uh, but these bladder snails are just just a, they're a scourge. Uh, I say you know that about the red cherry shrimp, how they breed like cockroaches. Well, so do these snails. You know they just they just multiply and infest. And I, I really uh, uh, you know and I'm really not happy about having gotten stuck with them and I wish uh, uh, plant growers would be a little more cognizant I guess that's a good word aware of what they're doing there's some I don't know if you can see them here but there are some right along the water line as well and I'll go through and I will let's see if I can do that there's one there's two there's three they float on the surface of the water um, you know upside down they're they're that they you know they just sort of motivate along the surface of the water that way uh and uh but when they're crushed they are a food source so i really don't have any problems with with crushing them uh the guppies seem to love them the uh, wild type molly seem to love them uh, so i you know i don't it's kind of like repurposing them so anyway that's kind of it so i thought i'd share that with the the copper foil tape that's the <laughs> the whole point of this whole video was to just share the copper foil tape uh, along the top of this this one tank, and hopefully that'll take care of the snails crossing, you know, crossing boundaries from uh, one tank to the other. Because that's the only way I figure they can get in here, or, or you know, I've been seeing them in here. Hopefully that'll I'll keep a really close eye now, make sure that uh, uh, while they're small, if I can get them all out of this tank, I, I will do that. And then I don't have to worry about him moving on to the next tank and the next tank and the next tank because that would not work for me. But anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, and I hope you got something out of that. And I hope you don't mind my rambling. And it's always a pleasure. So do me a favor, like and subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, trying to build up a, a, a following. I like to keep this uh, kind of informative and educational if I can because that was my background. I was a teacher for 20 years. And uh, this gives me an opportunity to do that without having to show up in somebody's classroom. So anyway, be well, have a great week.